Good morning, people. Can you hear me? Uh, my name is Grecia Casares. Uh, I am an academic consultant in Richmond, uh, Mexico, and I live in Monterrey. I'm in the northern part of Mexico. And uh, I see that right now we have 221 people uh, connected, and I've been reading your comments. Uh, I see people from Peru. I see people from Mexico City, uh, Honduras. Uh, good morning, welcome, and I hope you are uh, watching this broadcast, this uh, webinar uh, in the safeness of your house. Um, I know how you've been doing with this, with this quarantine thing, but um, uh, we, we, we have made ourselves a uh, BC here, the Richmond team, with the, all of this uh, webinar series that we've been offering you, and uh, we hope you really have enjoyed yourself uh, by watching this. So, uh, Marta Carrasco, I I read that you cannot see me. Um, uh, what do you see? I mean, uh, is it the like all black or? Are no, are, are no. Uh, uh, this is just uh, the fact that you can see me right now is just uh, to introduce myself so you can put a face on the voice. But uh, don't worry if you cannot see me. Uh, as long as you can hear me uh, loud and clear, that's fine for me. Okay. So I'm going to uh, close my my camera now. So. Uh, but you can see what I am broadcasting in, in, in the, that I'm showing my slides, right? I can see that you can see. So as long as you can see that, uh, it's okay. So I'm going to close my camera now so we can start, we can start this thing, okay? Um, all right, guys. So if you have been following our, our um, uh, webinars, uh, you must be familiar with this dashboard. And you know, and you must know how to how to work with it. But for uh, the newcomers, for the people who have a, a whose webinar, whose this big webinar is the first one, I'm going to give a quick uh, uh, explanation of what you see in your dashboard. Um, the first uh, symbol is uh, is sort of blurry, but it's a microphone. And when the microphone is red. That means that uh, people cannot hear you. That means the microphone is, is closed and you are muted. But if this microphone is green, uh, we can hear everything you say. We can hear anything is around you. So be careful. And the second symbol, uh, you will see that it's, uh, it's a little hand with a with an arrow pointing upwards. This means this uh, arrow, uh, well, this symbol can be used uh, in case you want to make a question, okay? Um, uh, since uh, we are, go there are a lot of people uh, in the connected right now, it's going to be uh, a bit, uh, difficult to keep up with all your doubts. However, I'm going to be opening the questions uh, window from time to time to uh, try to answer some of your some of your questions. And if not, if you have really, really, really specific questions, you can send them to my email at the end of the session. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to share uh, share my I can, yeah, I see that some people can hear me like a, like as if it, with some interference. Um, you need to consider people that uh, right now a lot of a lot of uh, us, a lot of people are using the internet, and there's a lot of people connected to this uh, platform. So we might uh, we might uh, expect these uh, failures to happen. Uh, however. Uh, uh, this webinar is, go is is being recorded, so in case if you have missed some little bits of the presentation, uh, this is going to be recorded. 
sorry. Um, and you can check out the recording um, in the following days. Okay, so I'm going to proceed to explain the last uh, area of the webinars dashboard. This is for the questions you have. Uh, now, um, the, anything you put, you 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 post in here, uh, nobody can see it. I am the only one who can see it. Um, but due to the amount of people connected today, there are 343 people. Uh, it's kind of hard to keep up with this, so I'm going to try to answer as many questions as I can. Okay, so without uh, further ado, I'm go we're going to start with this. So, okay. So the webinar's name is Now You're Talking. Uh, the purpose of this uh, session is for is to give you ideas on how to develop a, how, how to develop a, a it's try to develop a speaking skills. I'm going to give you suggestions on a speaking strategies um, and uh, other um, aspects that involve developing, uh, getting your students to speak in the classroom because you know sometimes sometimes they are too shy or they are very insecure about the speaking skills. But fear not, teachers. I'm gonna give you some very useful um very very useful um suggestions for this okay so the first to begin with this i'm going to open a poll i'm gonna la launch the, this poll and i'm gonna have it open for a minute okay i'm going to let me open my um my stopwatch, my timer, sorry. So I'm going to put it in one minute. And for that minute, during that minute, you will be voting on this on this uh, poll. Here's the question. Okay, so what would you bring to a deserted island if you were stranded there for a year? A year without being able to get out from there. And in this island, there will be coconuts, there will be fish, and there will be fresh water. So you wouldn't have to, um, to worry about food during that time in, in the stranded island. So you can start voting. Okay. Okay, people are voting. Okay. All right. Okay, so I'm going to close the poll right now and here are the results okay uh, so most of you well you chose wisely people uh 60 percent 63 percent of of the audience uh, voted uh, to bring with you a first aid kit. Uh, I wrote fist, sorry about that typo. This first aid kit, a tent, and your favorite book series. Well, obviously, uh, we're not going to take 
a smartphone or a tablet with endless battery because it's a stranded island, so they won't, it will be purposeless because um, because uh, you don't need the phone or a tablet because there's no Wi-Fi in there. So it will be pointless to bring it. Uh, this is an activity. This is an activity that uh, can be carried out um, orally. So you uh, you can have your students um, you can have your students um, discuss these uh, these options. Uh, in here, I have to do it with control answers because uh, I cannot have you interact uh, in time in real time. But uh, you can do so with your students by posting uh, uh, by showing them a question and having them uh, give the, their opinion or what uh, what they think about this question. Okay. So there are other icebreakers that we're going to try uh, right now. The first one is the alpha ball game. In here, this is like, uh, I don't know if you ever uh, played a uh, basta. Okay, so you will sit, uh, have your students sit on, on, the, on a circle and then give them a category. So in here, students need to say a uh, food, uh, 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 a vocabulary re related to food that starts with the the letters in the alphabet. For example, food a uh, with a uh, that starts with A will be apple. The next student will say bananas. The third student will say um, I don't know, uh, like. Uh, uh, I forgot uh, uh, something related to food with uh, with the C, but the students are going to be giving a vocabulary related to the categories we have here. This is very simple and um, also very enriching. You can even, uh, for example, if you are if you're working with um, a, a specific topic in your book, uh, you can have your students elicit. Um, okay, cucumber, thank you. Coconut, coconut chips, ex excellent. Uh, carrot, yeah, uh, I blacked out a bit. Coffee, like the thing that I'm drinking right now. Um, so as you can see, it is very engaging and um, you can even add some challenge. Uh, there's a variation that I, that I usually apply that is called the last man standing. In here, the challenge is that students cannot uh, cannot repeat any words. Obviously, in here, it wouldn't be possible with the alpha ball game. But, uh, for example, with the last man standing, students cannot repeat words. So, if a student repeats a word, uh, obviously, that's for, that person needs to go back. It will be out of the game, will be disqualified for the game. And the person who... Thank you, celery, cream, cantaloupe, yes. Um, and uh, um, this kind of activity, obviously uh, the person who wins in the last man standing is the last man standing, the last student in there. Okay, the next activity, the complete procedure of the activities that I'm presenting you today are in the handouts. Uh, it's in the handout that I uploaded in in uh, the handout section. It's it's a PDF that you can download there, so you can have the complete procedure of these activities. Um, the next the next game. Okay. Oh, it's my favorite one. I love tongue twisters. And we're going to try uh, this activity all together. So in your, in your houses, uh, please try to say this tongue twister. We're going to try it out. Clean, clam, scram in clean cans. Okay? If two shoes shoes, should two shoes the shoes he shoes? And the next one? Green glass globes glow greenly. Okay, so we're going to try uh, to 
say this, uh, we're going to try to practice these tongue twisters at home, okay? Now, when you have your students uh, work with tongue twisters, sometimes it can get repetitive because sometimes we don't know what to do with them other than repeating it once again and again and again. So I, I, um, uh, I use a die. I'm going to activate my camera for to but well later. I am going. Uh, I use a die to pra to have my students practice with tongue twisters. Each die or each side of the die, as you know, is a, is a, has a number, right? So what I did is that I uh, assigned a challenge to each number of the die. So the challenge that we have here is that, for example, if the student gets number one, the student needs to say the tongue twister with as fast as he or she can. This is like, that's like very traditional. If the student gets two, he, the student gets to say the tongue twister backwards, so it's challenging. Number three needs to say the tongue twister three times without stopping. Number four needs to say the tongue twister in a British accent. Number five in a high pitch voice. And number six with a low pitch voice. So uh, it's this activity is very enjoyable. And right now we're going to try it. Okay. Uh, I'm going to select a random person, a random person, and I'm going to open this person's uh, microphone. Okay. Okay, I have Itzel Murua. I'm going to activate your microphone. Okay, well, I cannot open her microphone. Well, I'm going to try somebody else. Let's see, Javier Montes de Oca. Okay, I could open your microphone. Hello, Javier. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, loud and clear. You ready for the challenge? Uh, yeah, yes, I am. Okay, I'm going to roll the die. Okay. Okay, you got four. So you need to say the tongue twister with your best British accent. Well, that's a good one. <laughs> if okay. I, uh, okay. I don't right. have much practice with the British accent. No, 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 don't, don't worry. Okay. Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. You ready? Yeah. You're ready, okay. Clean clams, cram, and clean cans. Very good. Thank you. Thank I'm not you, sure thank you. that I was British, but. <laughs> but you try, but you try. I okay. tried. So, and now I'm gonna mute you to select another person. Thank you very much, Javier. You're welcome. All right, now I'm going to select another person. Let's go to the, okay, to the R. I'm going to choose a lady. I got Rosie, Rosie Lagunas. Rosie, oh, where are you, Rosie Lagunas? Okay, here you are. I'm going to activate your microphone. You there, Rosie? Can you hear me? Yes, I am. Very good. So, you ready for the challenge? Uh, one second. Okay, sorry, I'm sorry. going. Sure. Oh. What is the challenge? Sorry. Is that you? I'm going to roll a die, and you have to say the tongue twister with the challenge assigned to the number of the die. Okay? So okay. I'm gonna roll the die. So you got five. 
So you need to say the tongue twister I have on screen with a high pitched voice, like the highest you can. You ready? Hey, ready. There you go. Clean hands, screen and the clean hands. Very good, way to go. Excellent, thank you very much, Rosie, for participating. Uh -huh. Now I'm going to mute your your um, your microphone. Thank you very much. So you can try this activity with all all kind of students. You can apply it uh, with uh, students in elementary, students, uh, teenagers, with adults, and as you can see, it's very engaging. And students have lots lots of fun. Okay. Now uh, we're going to continue. You're gonna con uh, okay. Uh, okay. So the next activity, I, I have people wanted to participate. Uh, uh, maybe you're not going to participate in this one, but I have other activities where I'm going to open your microphones. So the next one is positive, negative, crazy. Uh, you know, right now we are all in quarantine in our houses due to coronavirus. So, um, I know um, this. Uh, I know uh, if we have people uh, hearing us from uh, Ecuador. Uh, well, really, I know you're having it like a like a rough, rough time with this situation, and we're really, really, really sorry. Uh, but um, uh, I want you to try to share with me, I'm going to open the microphones again, something positive in your life that happened due to this uh, situation we're living right now. Something negative, uh, well, obviously the negative part is uh, all the sick people, etc. cetera, uh, but something like personal, that's something that happened to you that is negative related to to coronavirus, to the coronavirus situation, and something crazy, something that you never expected would happen from uh, from a coronavirus or like coronavirus, like Cardi B would say it. Uh, now I'm going to go back to the attendees section. I'm going okay. I have Luis Solorzano wanted to participate. So, Luis Olorzano, are you there? Hello, can you hear me? Hello, yes, loud and clear. So, so uh, Luis, so uh, get, tell me, give me some, tell me something positive that happened in your life uh, or something that you see that uh, that is positive in your life due to the uh, coronavirus uh, situation. Okay, something positive is that, uh, well, so I'm Luis Alorzano, I'm from Ecuador, Santo Domingo City. Uh, so okay. he, he, in my part of life, uh, during those that, that, uh, situations, I can share with my family here at home. So it's so incredible because we are just in our jobs and now we can share uh, more times and doing some games to be that part of time a little funny because it is a, a little body sometimes when we are here at home. Yeah, so you get you get uh, some more time that you probably didn't have uh, while you were working to bond with your, your family members, right? Yeah. Very good. Thank you very much, Luis. So I'm going to mute you again. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm gonna go with, okay, Saida, Saida Melissa. I'm going to open your microphone. Hello, Saida. Can you hear me? Saida, you there? Okay. She, I think she, she's not there. So I'm gonna go with Xiomara. Xiomara Mos, Mosquera. Oh, I cannot open your, so I'm gonna go with the other side, Xiomara. Oops, 
I cannot open this Hello. Post. Hello, Xiomara, Xiomara Melissa. Yes. Okay, give me something uh, negative uh, that you see from this situation besides the sick people and all the chaos with the economy. Well, something negative for me is that people are starving, so I feel so sad. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's really, 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 really bad. Thank you very much, Simara. You're welcome. And for the crazy, I'm going to open Monica. Monica, floor, floor, or I cannot open your 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 microphone, so I'm gonna go with. Oh, I cannot open. Okay, I'm gonna try somebody else. Uh, okay, Mayra Alejandra. Mayra Alejandra Dusan. Hello. Hello, Mayra. Can you hear me? Okay, I'm going to choose on somebody else. Mariela Marcias. Can you hear me? Oh my goodness, what happens with the crazy? Okay, well, people, something crazy that has happened to you uh, due to the COVID-19 uh, situation. If you can share it to, to me, okay, Marta Carrasco, it says, okay, I'm gonna, Marta, okay, hello, Marta. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Great. Share something crazy that happened, that has happened to you during this uh, situation. Oh. Okay. Uh, well, hello everyone. I'm from Los Mochis, Sinaloa, Mexico. So it's the north part of the country. So something really crazy that has happened here is that uh, the beer plants are closing. So everybody rushed to the stores to buy loads and loads of beer. I don't know what's going to happen with that, but there's like a lot of people buying a lot of beer. And for me, that's really crazy. It's even crazier than the toilet paper situation. Yeah, people are really, really in need of beer. Yeah, the same happened I know. in Monterrey. So, well, yes, yeah, people. well, north part of the country, what can you do? <laughs> Just drinking beer, I guess. So, okay, thank yes. you very much. Thank you very, thank you. very much. Bye. I'm going to mute your, your uh, microphone now. So uh, this is another activity that you can try out in, uh, in your class. And as you can see, it, is, it doesn't really need like much planning. Just choosing the right situation to trigger all of these responses, okay? Uh, the next, uh, well, now we're going to go to the theoretical part. So I want you to reflect a little bit on the uh, questions I have here uh, in on screen. Why do you think uh, your students are so shy? Oh, or why don't they volunteer so much uh, to answer uh, during class discussions? Uh, why don't they share ideas when nominated? Um, why don't they interact in pairs? Sometimes when we, um, when we set pairs, the interaction is not as, uh, as optimal as we wish. Sometimes they get distracted or they don't uh, engage into the topic as much as we wish. But, and, and so on. Am I putting too much pressure on them so early in the term? How can I stop them from speaking in their L1? Should I always stop them from speaking in their L1? This is, this uh, two last questions are very, very controversial in ELT, but uh, I'm going to show you some strategies to try to tackle these problems. Okay. How to deal with shyness? Uh, one strategy is that you sh uh, should be very careful on the on the team formation and team for formation. 
uh, for example, uh, what you can do to set your, your, your students is to, instead of uh, using larger teams, you should go for pair work. Uh, pair work in the form of interviews, debates, or role plays. Uh, you can also ask to, uh, students to participate randomly, similar to what I did today. Uh, however, um, you can, uh, for example, something that I did while I was teaching is that I would take the attendance list and just uh, set my finger like randomly on the list and that person, uh, that the name that was under my finger will be the person that will participate. And in this case, students don't have any idea who's going to, to participate. And ask simple questions, especially if you see that the student is like really, really anxious or is really stressed about being nominated, try to keep it simple and try to uh, try not to put a lot of pressure on your students because that is going to demotivate uh, him or her. Uh, something else, that is good to try is <clears throat> to try to listen. Always listen to what your students are saying, so you can um, so you don't need to to ask them to to participate again or to repeat what they were saying. Especially if you see that the student is very shy, and also this is something very uh, difficult for teachers not to interrupt them. We need to let them finish what they are saying because remember, try to put yourself in your students' shoes. They are not comfortable. They are uh, probably struggling. Uh, they are feeling stressed. So uh, try to listen to them without any interruptions or corrections. Be objective when correcting. Teachers, uh, we tend to overcorrect our students. I That's something that was is like is something I need to I needed to to work a lot on not to overcorrect my students. Uh, so for example, if you if you are work if you are working with elementary students like in, in the elementary levels like A1 or A, um, and if you ask your students to to communicate something that they did uh, to, uh, during the weekend, but you haven't. Uh, you haven't presented the past tense and your student expresses in, 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 in present, you shouldn't be correcting your student in something that you haven't presented yet. So try to be objective uh, on your corrections. Other is that you should give students more control. Try not to be, for example, something that we tend to do uh, as teachers is that sometimes when they are they don't, um, we try to be like very like controlling on what uh, what we want them to say, but no, I mean, you should, uh, anything that the students say, uh, as long as he or she says it, expresses it in English, I think it's okay. Now, for the L1, the L1 is like very, very controversial. Um. Back in the university, uh, I was taught that uh, as teachers, we should uh, leave the L1 for only for to the minimum. So we should use it the minimum in our classes. Um, this might work with, um, with uh, for example, uh, children that were since they are they are not a uh, the. Um, they are like sponges and they are getting all of this input. But for, for example, uh, with adults, it's very different. Adults are will always feel the need to use the L1 because they are a, like, a, I don't know, they are like more self-aware of their skills. So um, for, for example, with adult, adults, what you need to do is to give students the language they need. Still, I, I will keep the L1 to the minimum, but if you give your students the language in English that the they need, they will feel the less need to use the L1. For example, you can do this uh, through prompts uh, placed around the classroom, for example, with uh, posters with classroom language, 
uh, if you are working with a specific um, a specific uh, grammar point, you should always make this language visible for the student and available for him or for her to use it. So if you see that your student is using the L1, but he or she has the input to uh, the information to use it in English, you should say, okay, thank you for saying it in expressing it in Spanish, but we already saw that, that language. So it, if you look at there, if you look at that poster next to the, the blackboard, uh, you can express it in English if you use the language we have there. So, uh, in obviously, there are cases where we need to use the L1, but I should leave it for the minimum. Because in the classroom, uh, well, it's the only instance in their life, possibly, where they get to use the target language. Also, something else that you could do is to determine uh, L1 free periods. For example, uh, when working with projects, or when working in teams, those are the times, the instances where students can use the language in the target language, which is English, uh, naturally. So you can set a time, for example, 30 minutes, where students shouldn't be speaking in the L1. And maybe you can, uh, I don't know, uh, ask, uh, give not a punishment, but uh, there will to be a consequence for speaking the L1 or no. If you, uh, if I hear somebody uh, speaking Spanish during this L1 free uh, period, the person is going to, I don't know, bring the snacks for all the classroom the next day. I don't know, you, you, you decide what to do. Uh, but you should determine periods in the class where nobody, should be speaking Spanish or Portuguese if we have people from Brazil in here. And the last one is to keep the classroom language at sight. This is what I was telling you about a, giving the students the language they need. If you want to try to keep a prompts of, of a, and with language the students can use a, commonly, for example, simple past, simple present, uh, polite requests, models, etc. Keep them outside in your classroom so students can always see that there's a, a reference for what they are saying. And in the last one, it says uh, effective interaction. How can we get our students to interact effectively? Uh, first, the first one is that they learn the language through doing a task. This is this could be through projects through something uh, hands-on so students can actually apply what they are learning in class. Another one is encourage the use of comprehension check while students interact. This could be, uh, for example, um, conversation and answers like, uh, could you repeat it? Uh, um, uh, was that, is, is this what you try to say? and probably try to rephrase the, the, the statement that the other student said. Another includes jigsaw activities where some student would have the information the other doesn't. Now we have a TPR learning. TPR is also very useful, especially when uh, you are going to uh, teach vocabulary. This works best with uh, children but I have applied it with adults and it really works. So, uh, okay, I have people, L1. The L1 is uh, the mother tongue. That would be um, a Spanish or Portuguese uh, or in some places it's French. So it's the, it's the, the first language of the, of the person. Mm. Okay. So a jigsaw activities also are very useful when we want our students to interact. Okay. Um, okay, let's continue. Now, something that uh, 
our students feel insecure about is the is proficiency. Sometimes they, well, this happened a lot, especially with the adults. Uh, I remember having this group where these students were like, didn't have like any instruction in English. They, well, they had, they knew a lot, a few, few things in English, but it was like a, an introduction level. So these students were very insecure about using the, um, using the language, using English in, in the classroom. So they always wanted to speak Spanish because that's how they could communicate. So something that I did is that once I started presenting the, the language, they, um, they, uh, I asked them to try to apply what they were, they were, uh, they were, they learned and try to express in whichever form they could, but as long as they did it in English, it would be okay. So sometimes, obviously at the beginning, they, they committed a lot of mistakes. There were a lot of errors, but eventually they started to get the hang of it. They started to be a little bit more fluent, but because I was not focusing so much on the, on the proficiency, but because I wanted to be fluent. But uh, once the students are like are already fluent in, in, in the language, we need to look for proficiency and the inaccuracy. So what is proficiency to begin with? Is language proficiency is or linguistic proficiency is the ability of an individual to speak or perform in a language. So students will have different kinds of, of, of proficiency. And um, once the students are somewhat proficient or that have reached a certain level, then we need to start uh, focusing on accuracy. But uh, the, first, the first thing is that they try to reach a certain level of proficiency. And okay, these are some strategies that uh, you can uh, do to try to raise, uh, try to uh, work with proficiency in your classroom. First is sign a contract on the first day of school, promising to use only the target language within the classroom walls. Uh, it is very important that the teacher and the students monitor their peers. So this contract is followed. Something else that you can do is begin each day with an interpersonal speaking activity. And uh, some of these activities could be, for example, a two-way spontaneous interaction, maybe by, uh, by saying, good morning, uh, how, how are you doing? Or maybe by using questions, uh, questions like the one I posted at the beginning of the, of the, of the session or just any random conversation, as long as it is done in English. Also, uh, monitoring your partner's comprehension, following up, reacting, and maintaining the conversation. This is try to uh, encourage the students to continue with the, the conversation. For example, if you see that your student is sharing something to do in English, you should uh, encourage the person to continue speaking. Obviously, as long as it is yes, in English. Indicating interest through body language and eye contact. If you see, if your students see that you are distracted or that you your body language is not uh, is tell is telling him that you are not paying attention, this is going to be very demotivating for the student, and he or she will probably not engage in another conversation with you. And another one is focusing on the message and asking for clarification if needed. And this could be done by rephrasing um, what the person that the person say in, instead of uh, asking him in Spanish. You could say, "Okay, did you uh, did I understood well? Understand well? Did you say? Uh, did you wanted to say this? Uh, did you want to say this? Uh, I'm sorry." and try to rephrase what the other person say to 
uh, to clarify the message. And memorize it, something that I shouldn't recommend if you want to, to work with proficiency is memorize dialogues uh, or one person asking all the questions. That is not, um, the students are not going to practice with proficiency because only one person will be the one doing all the questions. And memorization, for example, memorizing a dialogue is not ideal for this because it's too controlled. Uh, another thing that you shouldn't do is strict turn taking or ignoring your partner's comprehension. Something that is very common when, I don't know, when we are distracted or uh, I don't know if this has happened to you, but somebody is saying something and yet you do, didn't really understand uh, what the other person say and then you just say like, ah, yes, or you just laugh, but you didn't understand a thing of the, what the other person did, uh, what the other person say. So that is really bad because the other person, sometimes they feel that they, they that you didn't really understood and that you, you were just, in Spanish we say, estabas dando el avión, and, and uh, that's really, really rude. Something else that you shouldn't do is ignore your partner in order to say something, like constant interruption, or when the, your, the, the, your partner is saying something and that you, just, you just ignore it, and then you started uh, talking about something else that's also really rude. And something else that you shouldn't do is giving up if you didn't understand. So if you didn't understand, try to uh, continue explaining or trying to get this uh, feedback from the other person to see if you really, really understood. Uh, now I'm going to open the questions for a bit to see if there are, there's anything in here. Um, on pur purpose, I write the vocabulary I previously introduced and they, I love correcting myself. Okay. Is this, yes, is this to, to work with fluency and proficiency when we want our students to, uh, to get them to talk? And in here we are making a difference of what is an interpersonal activity and what is not an interpersonal activity. So we can, uh, so we can uh, apply this in, in our classrooms. Should I let students use L1 in class? Is this right? Um, only, I would use it only when it's necessary. When you really, really, really uh, uh, see that there's, uh, there's no comprehension uh, at all, uh, maybe you should, um, you should do, maybe you should find a word or a match in, the, in, in Spanish that could be similar to what you are explaining. Something that I did is, for example, when the students were speaking a lot of Spanish or were having troubles with certain vocabulary or grammar points, is that the next day I would do maybe for 10 or 15 minutes, I would start my class with a, maybe a, a review of that a grammar point of that vocabulary and try to find a matching, a, for example, a exponents in Spanish that will be similar to those I wanted them to comprehend. But uh, you, honestly, I would, uh, it's, it's not good when you get your students to speak like a lot, a lot of Spanish, because this is the only moment where they will get to to practice the 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 target language. In this case, English. I have wondered the same when colleagues are asked to give their opinion or to participate. Um, mm, okay, I see there are not uh, nor more. Uh, while exposing in teams how to manage students who feel shy and don't dare to go through. Um, in here, maybe if you see that the, the student is way too shy, maybe at the beginning, uh, you could uh, ask the student to, to expose or to present just to you, so you can evaluate the student and, um, and 
and eventually try to incorporate it to the team. But if the student is way too shy, uh, he or she should be presenting to you first. And you can do all the, the grading there while he's presenting to you. And then uh, maybe if he is willing to do so, to present with the team, but he will already have his or her grade. Proficiency is the level the student has. For example, um, uh, the test that we get in, in for example, TOEFL or um, flyers and this, this uh, exam are proficiency exams. So uh, they level, they measure the level you have in English. And fluency is to speak, just to be able to speak uh, without stopping and all of that. Uh, how can we help a shy student? Well, shy students are, we need to work with self-confidence first. And, and then try them to get them to speak. But we try students are a challenge because you need to work them like uh, slowly. Yes. Okay, so we're gonna continue. Okay, so these are some conversations enhancers that we can use, uh, we can teach our students uh, to try to uh, keep the conversation fluent. Like really, wow, that's interesting. No kidding. And when you teach uh, conversation enhancers, that gives the students a lot of opportunity to learn slang because you know there are enhancers that are particular for American English. There are others that are particular to uh, British English. Others to Australian. So if you want to enrich your uh, the student's vocabulary, you can teach them conversation enhancers from a particular dia uh, English dialect. Um, wait. Okay. Now uh, there's another uh, strategy that you can try. This is, is called uh, seven turn taking taking strategies. The first one is to speak then ask. Uh, impaired students discuss a topic, a uh, student one gets the ball rolling with his her opinion, then ask his her partner a question. So this is like a turn taking, a turn taking conversation. Number two, <clears throat> use conjunctions. Teacher writes down a list of conjunctions of the board. Students say something and add more info by using a conjunction. Number three, phrases for agreeing or disagreeing. I agree, disagree with you. I'm afraid I can't, don't agree with you. I couldn't agree more. This is really, really useful when you don't want your students to say yes or no. For example, uh, we're going to use this uh, in, in another activity uh, later. So this is really, these, are, these um, phrases are really good when you don't want them to say yes or no. Number four, do you like that idea? What do you think? Does that make sense to you? So this is uh, when uh, you want our students to share their opinions. Pillars for pause. Let me see, let me think. The thing is, what I mean is, this is to try to avoid the, uh, mm, oh, so that can, might be confusing. So you can, instead of doing those sounds, you can ask your students to use these fillers for pauses. Number six, avoiding interruptions. There are X things I would have to, although I, even though I, because they, so try to uh, have your students say these phrases to avoid interruptions. And number seven, fluency over accuracy. Give converse corrections to a minimum. In fact, consider simply that let them speak and giving them feedback at the end. This works wonders with beginners, with students that are insecure. When we want to build up confidence in our students, we should, uh, uh, we should focus more on the fluency than the accuracy. Once the students have reached certain level of proficiency, once you consider your student is is ready to receive this correcting feedback, then is when you should do it. 
or, and it is very important not to expose the students as well. Uh, I would do, the, do this feedback maybe at the end of the class or the next day by saying, okay, while I was uh, going around, moving around the classroom, I could hear this. I could hear you were saying this phrase like so. So I would use this, uh, those samples of language to do the corrections, the pertinent corrections without, and this without exposing the students. Mm. How can I motivate, oh, this is a good question. How can I motivate a student with language disorders to participate in my class? How can I correct pronunciation without hurting his or her feelings? Um, with this, this kind of students, it is very important to do it privately. Um, uh, with this, with people with this kind of disorders, we need to build up a lot of self-confidence. So I will focus a lot on their students' fluency and then do all the correction uh, privately, just with this person. And this uh, student will need a lot of support maybe with the pronunciation. You can model the pronunciation, you can work, have the student repeat it a lot, but just to you just to you, not in front of the rest of the class, because that makes them too exposed and too self-aware. So that's something that you could uh, do with uh, this person. Uh, I have this, my golden rule in classroom is that once they cross the door frame, they have to switch on to English. As long as they see you and hear you speaking L2, they will follow your lead. Teachers are in charge creating the proper environment, the proper environment for them to feel encouraged to speak English. Yes, if they hear English, they will be motivated to speak English. Um, thank you very much, Carolina. That's a great idea. Uh, how to connect students with low level and besides with special needs. The same I, I, I explained with the student with uh, language disorders. Try to focus on the fluency, not so much on the uh, on the accuracy. This is to raise the student's self confidence, and eventually they will they will get to the accuracy. Don't worry about that. Okay, so the next one is eliminate activities which you ask individual where you ask uh, here. I have a typo. Where in where you ask individual students questions instead promote fair work and mind the members in each team. Uh, what do I mean by minding the members in each team? Not to pair, not to pair friends, because when you pair friends, they get too distracted and they are not going to do what you are asking. Instead, give students the choice to choose their group, obviously, by considering that the, the, the members. Uh, you can do random grouping by colors, numbers, etc. You can select the groups yourself. Uh, the, in here, you need to be very careful not to pair uh, friends because that's not going to work. They are going to get too distracted. Um, then, some uh, interpersonal activities. These are some interpersonal activities. The first one is Speed date. I don't know if you ever tried a speed date. Uh, in a speed day is a state, I'm sorry. Students are arranged in one in front of the other. The purpose in here is that uh, one row is will be moving and the other won't. So students are going to be uh, participating at all times and they will be speaking. Uh, Something that uh, will give you a little bit more control on the speed date is by using prompt questions like the ones I have here. What's, for example, uh, what's your favorite piece of clothing you own or have owned? I would uh, uh, show this, this uh, question maybe with a slide, with a PowerPoint slide, and have my students discuss this question for one or two minutes and then I will change it for the next one. What hobby 
would you get if you if in get into if time and money weren't an issue so again your students will be discussing this uh these questions for one or two minutes and then you will change it to the next one what would you prefer what why would your perfect room look like mine is a room with lots of sun lots of plants around and a very comfortable bed that that will my my perfect room look like and again the students will be uh, one row of the students will be moving with each question so students will be able to discuss uh, all of these questions for one or two minutes with everyone and the last question what would you per, uh, sorry how often do you play sports okay so let me open the questions yes my advice is to use open questions because if you use yes no questions the students are going to answer yes or no so what we want our students is to uh, is to get them to speak to be fluent and obviously during these uh, two minutes that while the students are are speaking they should be uh, using the the enhancers like saying uh or oh, really i agree with that oh that happens to me that that happened to me as well i don't know so this is is for students to engage in conversation that so that probably will happen in real life and another activity is to use interviews and uh, for example, <clears throat> I think the, the, one, the activity that comes in, in, in the handout is to try to, uh, this, this is like a role play activity where you can select a person to be a famous character. I don't know, mm, I don't know, somebody, uh, I don't know, Quentin Tarantino. I, I, I'm sure you all know him. Uh, so you can have uh, all the, the 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 group to interview to ask questions to uh, questions that they would ask to this famous person. Another activity, another variation for an interview is to have a famous uh, or some somebody uh, to be interviewed uh, in 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 your class. Uh, I don't know, maybe a policeman or. Um, uh, someone that has done something remarkable in your community you can invite this person and have your students interview this uh, this this guest uh, and next one uh, these are other things to consider to foster English proficiency and motivate students to speak. Here we have more activities. First is to use interesting topics. You can controversial topics work wonders because uh, there's always there will be always an opposite uh, uh, um, a side that will be that will be agree with uh, would agree with this topic. Others that won't. So con controversy in the classroom really really motivates students to 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 speak uh, you can also use current situations for example the one that i use is is a coronavirus but uh, you can use for example topics related to ecology economy or maybe just you know your students you know what they like you know what they don't like and maybe you can use the topics they they are exposed to to have them uh, to use it as discussions. Also, make your presence know. When you get, when you set your students in teams, it's very important that you don't go to your seat just to do some mark, do some uh, checking papers or whatever. It is very important that you are moving around the classroom, monitoring what your students are saying. Something that I used to do is I would go, I would always have a post-it or a, in a pen with me while doing this. So I would be 
taking notes of what my students are saying. So this also gives you sample of their real language. Uh, they will give you clear examples of their mistakes so you can later do the corrections. And you can even say, stay with a, a particular team uh, for a moment um, just to hear what they are saying and to participate with them. That also motivates your students when you participate in their conversations. And model. Modeling is vital. Remember, teachers, you are the source of language in the classroom. So <clears throat> modeling the language is very important because it will give your students the, <clears throat> uh, sorry, a reference of what they should say, the way they should say it, and also the kind of language they will be using or vocabulary they will be using. So it is very important that you try to model what they want to say. And for example, if you see that your student is trying to say something in Spanish, you can model the desirable uh, structure and then encourage your student to say it in English. So modeling also helps a lot. Uh, this is something that might not like to people who are very controlling is when we are we are language teachers we are teaching a language so we don't expect our, our classes to be all quiet so we need to be comfortable with organized chaos people speaking but not gelling uh people uh, mingling around the classroom but not running or not uh, acting as crazy people so we need to feel comfortable with this organized chaos. And in order to do so, we need to have clear objectives of our uh, activities. If we are going to do mingling activity, we, you should always have that controlling factor. For example, the question, some uh, you, keep, you keeping, track to, uh, keeping track of time or a challenge, I don't know, but it is uh, this organization will be provided by us by using uh, questions, using uh, limits like time, etc. <clears throat> now uh, we're going to work, uh, do some uh, activities uh, in case you you didn't uh, have, a, you need more ideas. Uh, I'm going to read some of your comments. A good way to encourage elementary kids to speak English is to grant one student the I speak English award weekly and maybe give them an extra point. Yes, 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 yes. Some schools have uh, their, their strategies. I remember uh, many years ago, I was uh, in a school that had this money. Uh, the, the school mascot was the a dragon. So this money, this currency was called dragon money. So every, we all, we teachers were given like large amounts of dragon money. So uh, if we, every time we heard a, a student saying something, saying something in English or something that, that was seen during class, like a particular grammar point and a student use it naturally in a conversation, I would give this person dragon money. So the students were very motivated by motivated by this drug on money because every I, I remember they were like every three months or something, the school will op would open a dragon store. So in this in this dragon store, they would uh, buy things with their dragon money. So students were like really, really motivated uh, by they were very eager and looking forward to, to spend their dragon money in the dragon store. And for example, every time I heard, I was very strict with this dragon, dragon money policy because when I heard my students uh, speaking Spanish, I would take dragon the one dragon money, uh, uh, yes, a dragon money from them and put it in like a swear jar, but it was like a speaking a Spanish jar. So I would put the dragon money in there. So 
And at the end, I would, uh, I always uh, told them that I would use that drug, all the dragon money I would collect, I collected from them to spend it, spend it myself in the dragon store. Obviously, I never did it. And they were first graders and they got to speak a lot of English. And more ideas, teachers. Okay, remember what I was telling you about using phrases to avoid saying yes or no? Okay, we're going to practice it today. So I have these statements and you're going to tell me whether you agree or not, but without saying yes or no. You cannot say yes or no. You need to find another way to say that you agree or you don't agree. I'm going to uh, open two people because we're running out of time. We're gonna have two people participate in this activity. Uh, okay. I have, I'm gonna choose somebody from the, from the top. Okay, I have Noelia. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Hello, Noelia, how are you? Good, and you? Great, great. Now, Noelia, without saying yes or no, you need to tell me uh, home, homework is harmful. Okay. Without saying yes or no. Is okay. homework harmful? harmful? Mm, let me think. Without saying yes or no. Can I say okay. I'm agree? Uh, well, I agree. I agree. I think it's okay. But why do you agree? Why? Why do you agree that harmful har uh, homework is harmful? Sorry. Well, why in these days, it? well, in these days, it is ha it is harmful because now the students are going to be like in these classes. Um, also, it is going to be a little bit more difficult for them to. Um, To be to be more in more classes, I don't know if you understand me because we have so many classes, we have so many subjects that they are going to study in uh, in our computer and have a lot of homeworks. Maybe for the students, it's going to be a little bit messy or 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 maybe difficult for them. Yes, in these days, it's going to be difficult to keep track of all the homework or try to check everything to to see if it's correct so maybe uh -huh. this time we should mind the the amount of homework we assign that's right yes very good thank you very much Noelia. no problem thank you bye i'm going to uh, mute your your microphone now now uh for the i'm going to open the other the other the other statements i'm gonna choose uh let's choose a gentleman um okay i have angel angel felipe hello angel hello how are you doing fine and you i'm fine thank you great now i have two statements for you uh, you're gonna choose one and you are gonna tell me if you agree or you disagree without saying yes or no. Okay. You choose because, the one that you want. Okay. Uh, we say we are becoming too dependent on computers. Uh, in this case, in this time, I think we should be because we don't have other way to teach our, our students. So I think the computers, uh, I agree with this statement in my case, I'm becoming too dependent because technology is a good tool for students to learn. So my uh, my answer is I agree. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you too. Now I'm going to mute you. Great. So these are just uh, some examples of what you can, you can, uh, how you can have your students. Uh, be a little bit more expressive on a, on, a, on a matter without saying yes or no. 
Then the next activity is phrase word charade. I'm going to explain this to you. This is uh, for, st for students to guess certain uh, vocabulary. The first word, this is uh, in here, you can have students uh, sit, uh, you can have them in pair, set them in pairs or do it as a whole class activity. But for uh, in, in this activity, there are three rounds. The first round, all the words will be, will have to be guessed through a phrase. In the second round, the words uh, will need to be guessed through a word. And in the third round, the word should be a, should be guessed through movement. Okay. Now I'm going to. We have this these three images. <clears throat> the first one, braid. So the, in here, you the student should say a phrase that is related to this word. The phrase that I chose is. Sorry, the phrase, for example, where it's for moon, the word is going to be for this word, this word, and the charade is going to be for this uh, word. In the first, the first uh, round will be with a phrase. The one that I chose is fly me to the moon. So students should guess that the word is moon. In the second word, I would use this, uh, the, the, I would say the word book, and what does the book have? Pages. So the word that I, that I uh, want my students to guess is the word pages. Sorry, is the word book, the, the, the word that I want my students to guess is book. And what does a book have? Pages. And in the last, in the last, uh, the last round, I want my students to guess this word. And for that, I will do an action. So I will do the drinking action. So my students guess that the word is water. So at the end, the words that I want my students to say are moon, a book, and water. And you can adapt this with any kind of vocabulary you have. If you have a specific vocabulary to go, go over, you can uh, do so through this activity. Okay, the next, uh, okay, for next is, oh, sorry. What should we teach in order to help them speak? Listening skills. Uh, if our students are not, don't know uh, don't know how to listen or are struggling a lot with listening, uh, they are not going to be able to speak. This is the first thing we need to teach them. Uh, skills that you need to teach to students is listening, highlighting the importance of listening attentively to another person when he is speaking. Also, body language. And for body language, uh, we can teach them this strategy, which is slant, sit up straight, listen, answer and ask questions, not to show interest or use a language enhancer, and track the speaker by doing what? Asking questions, asking for clarification, maybe uh, saying whether you agree or you disagree, etc. So what we're doing do right now is to recap everything what we that we have seen today. And always be polite. We need to teach them etiquette. Uh, think about your attitude. Uh, it's to acting politely. It's noticing what the when the bad attitude is rising up within you. Is uh, listen to and look at your conversation partners. A person can learn a lot about how someone else is feel by looking at their facial expressions. This is very important. If you see that the person is looking is looking elsewhere or is uh, starting to fidget a lot, 
this means that the person is not engaged with what you're saying. Maybe you are talking too much. Maybe you are, maybe what you're saying is not relevant for the other person. So you need to help teach your students to read all of this body language. Keep your voice calm. Try not to yell. Sometimes I, I do yell, but uh, that's because I'm from the North. And um, watch your body language. Well, it's okay to speak with your hands. Using forceful gestures, pointing at hitting are considered aggressive. Well, I think hitting is, uh, is considered aggressive everywhere. And avoid negative responses. Answering people with sarcasm, insults, or lack of seriousness is another way to send wrong messages to someone who, with whom you are speaking. Sarcasm is good only when the person you are talking to is very familiar, but uh, you shouldn't use it with strangers. Mm, okay, can you please present this land slide again? Yes, let me uh, finish with this and then I go. I will go back to the, let me go back to that, that slide. Slant, this is slant. It's a uh, sit up straight, listen, answer and ask questions and not to show interest and track the speaker's, the speaker's message. It's practically what we have been saying that you shouldn't interrupt, that you should be attentive to what the other is saying and try to look at the students, well, the person's body language. And, well, teachers, with this, uh, this is uh, the last part of our session. Uh, we're very close to the end. And, well, I want to finish with this, um, with this phrase. The only way to do great work is to love what you do. So we teachers, we have a big, 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 big responsibility because we work with human beings and the fact that they are motivated or they become demotivated by the language is our responsibility. So it is very important that you, we try to make our best when, when we are teaching. Um, and uh, well, I hope all of these strategies have a, a help you in your classes when you are teaching speaking, which I think is is rather difficult because we work with a lot of emotions in here. Um, this is my my uh, my contact data. If you wish. Uh, if you want further information or if you just uh, want to make a comment about uh, this session, you can send me an email to gcasares at clb.richmondelt.com and I will be very, very, very happy to answer. And if you have problems with the, I don't know, with sound or anything during this session. Uh, this session is being recorded and will be in these two channels. Go to stage.com slash channel slash Richmond webinars or uh, go to stage.com slash channel slash Richmond teacher training. Um, if you uh, don't find the, the, the video, um, you can send me an email and I will gladly send you the, um, the link. So thank you. I'm going to open open my, my camera just to say goodbye. That's me. Uh, thank you very much for to stay uh, for staying here uh, with me to today. Uh, I hope this, these activities are like useful to you. And well, thank you very much. And I hope to see you again anytime soon. So thank you very much, guys. Have a great day and stay safe. Stay at home, please. <laughs>